So um, you all have a copy of this, and I'm just going to go through this very quickly and explain to you how this works. You go from wellness to disease based on a number of assaults on the immune system. Now, let me say, of course, this is not all the assaults on the immune system. I could have this, this list go down to the floor and then over to China. But once you get the concept, you understand how it works. And this is why when I do a consult for somebody, what I do is go through their history, I find out the major assaults that they've been assaulted with, and then I teach them how to reverse those assaults. Because the wonderful thing is there are homeopathic nosodes, and I don't have time to explain what those are. But just in a nutshell, they are where you take the bad thing and you make a remedy out of it which only has the energy of the bad thing. It doesn't actually have the bad thing. If you uh, chemically analyze these homeopathic nosodes, you would find water with a little bit of alcohol as a preservative. And that's why the white coats call it quackery, because it's got nothing in it except for the energy. See, the white coats have no clue about energy. They don't know about the soul. They don't know about any of these things. All they know is about the chemical structure of the body and the anatomical structure. You know, they don't believe in God because they're God, you see. So anyways, the first, chemical, the first assault I have listed up here is, of course, the medical assault. The medical assault is largely vaccinations. This is what gets the ball rolling, causing all autoimmune diseases and cancer. But of course, we also have chemotherapy. And if you have anyone in your family that has cancer and they're on chemo, have them ask the white coat if chemo causes cancer. The answer is yes. And I've had a number of clients ask the white coat that question, and you know what they say? Well, it causes cancer, but not such a bad cancer as you have, you see. And that's the reason they give out five-year cure rates to people on chemo, just so you know, because statistically they know that if the chemo does shrink the tumor enough where they can claim you don't have cancer, they know you're probably going to get cancer from the chemo five years later. So that's how it works. Radiation also causes cancer. And the same thing has happened to uh, clients of mine that I've had ask the question about radiation. Does radiation cause cancer? Yes, but it's not as bad of a cancer as you have. So they want you to trade one cancer for another cancer. Just like all these commercials you see on TV with these drugs now, you have to laugh as they're skipping through the daisies, you know. We have a cold medicine for you. Of course, you could die, but you know, it's okay. I mean, it's, it's just amazing. Once you wake up to these things, you, you have to develop a sense of humor in my line of work, obviously. Okay. All right. So then uh, the second assault that I've listed here is the chemical assaults. Um, hair and nail products. Fluoride. Let me just mention something about fluoride quickly because this is very important. Fluoride was a drug given to the prisoners in Nazi Germany to keep them docile. It's actually some, a drug that causes mind control. It's an e ingredient in Prozac, just so you know. Fluoride also causes every enzyme in your body to be basically paralyzed. And all the enzymatic reactions in your body is what makes your body work. So this is a very important substance in terms of dysfunction globally in the body as well. Just so you know how, how corrupt the scientific research is, when I was a surgery resident, I was doing a lot of research because I wanted to be a pediatric surgeon. And as it turns out, there's only 15 pediatric surgery residencies in the U.S. and Canada. So in order, it's very competitive. In order to become a pediatric surgeon, you have to do research. And I saw the corruption and fraud involved in the research. They would have re uh, experiments done and the result would not be what was expected. And so they would ask, ask people, like for example, my mentor, his name is Dana Anderson, he's at uh, Duke University now. Uh, they would actually ask uh, people such as myself to change the hypothesis if the result doesn't turn out the way that they wanted it to turn out. Or you just exclude some of the subjects. I mean, there's so many ways that they twist and spin the data in order to make the results come out the way that they want them to make. But the actual research initially done on fluoride, where they tried to prove that it causes less tooth decay, I got the original paper. It caused less tooth decay because it made the men's teeth fall out. Okay, you got to laugh, right? That's how it caused less tooth decay. Fluoride not only doesn't cause less tooth decay, it actually causes something called fluorosis. 
If you've ever seen people with little white specks in their teeth, that's what it is. It also causes osteosarcoma in boys. I could go on and on. As a matter of fact, when I do a consult for people, I include uh, over 30 CDs of my internet radio show on different subjects because I've done a lot of shows. Some are no longer archived. And the one on fluoride is an hour just by itself. So I could spend this whole time talking about fluoride. That's how bad it is. It's a drug. They're putting it in the water. And the reason they're doing this is because fluoride is a toxic byproduct of aluminum manufacture and the pesticide industry. And if they hadn't come up with a way to get rid of it, they would have to pay billions of dollars to dump it somewhere. So instead of doing that, they sell it to your water companies. And I have some of the actual labels that go on those chemicals sold to the water companies. It's got a big skull and bones on it, and it says poison, not safe in any amount. Okay? That's what's happening. And I always tell people, don't believe anything I say. Check things out for yourself, because we've been lied to about everything. And I can assure you that I don't want to know any of these things. I didn't want to wake up to the degree I am now, because it's so sad to know that so many people have sold out, to know that my profession has been so twisted that they're causing more death and suffering in this world today than anything else. But once you face reality, then we can all do something together to change it. And that's going to be an amazing world we live in when that happens.